So let me start with the class by uh, sharing my screen. So I'm going to start sharing the screen. I hope you are able to see my screen now. Um, so I am actually going to basically look at three things today. One is star delta transformation. We had looked at in the last class. I'm going to talk about the application of star delta transformation because some of you had that question last time itself. Then I'm going to look at some of the network theorems in this class. So the network theorems uh, we are going to look at in this class or superposition theorem. The first one which are applicable for any uh, linear network or any linear system. And the second one that we are going to look at is Thevenin's and Norton's theorem. OK, so let me introduce these things one by one in the same order that I have uh, written here. Norton's theorems. OK, so let us first of all look at the star delta transformation and its applications. So I asked you to complete the derivation in the last class. I hope you have done. If you have not done, let me give you the final expression and then please verify it by deriving them once again. So the star delta transformation is if I am going to have three terminals, let us say A, B and C. These are the three terminals. And let us say I'm going to have R A connected to the A terminal and R B connected here and R C connected here. The same thing I can have maybe three resistances connected like this. OK, so this is going to be again A. This is going to be B and this is going to be C. So I'm calling this resistance as R A B and this particular resistance which is connected between B and C as R B C and what is connected between C and A as R C A. OK, now these two can be equivalent of each other provided I am able to express let's say R A in terms of R A B R B C and R C A and similarly R B and RC I can express which is actually going to tell me how to convert delta into star. So we derived this expression in the last class and we said that RA is going to be equal to RAB multiplied by RCA. So whichever involved A those two are going to come up here and then this is the summation of all the three resistances R A B plus R B C plus R C A. These are going to be the three resistances here. OK. And similarly, I am going to have R B when I when I want to write R B, R B should involve the two terms that involve B, which is R A B and R B C. These are going to be the two terms that involve B divided by again. I'm going to have R A B plus R B C plus R C A. OK, similarly, when I want to express R C in terms of the delta connected resistances, so R C will be equal to I should say this is equal to two terms which involve C R R C A and R B C. These are the two terms that involve C divided by R A B plus R B C plus R C A. OK, now this is delta to star conversion. Similarly, I should be able to write the expression for star to delta conversion. So what I mean is if I am given a star resistances R A R B R C, how do I convert that into R A B R B C and R C A? 
in terms of equals. So I have to first of all write an expression for R A B. Then I have to write an expression for R B C and I have to write an expression for R C A. OK, now whenever I am going to do delta to star conversion, generally denominator is a constant. I remember it this way, delta to star conversion, denominator is a constant and star to delta conversion, the reverse is true, which means numerator is a constant. OK, and the numerator involves basically R A R B plus R B R C plus R C R A. So two of them taken at a time and then I have to basically look at uh, the summation of those and when I divide this, the dividing factor should be away from A and B. If I want R A B, I have to divide it by R C. OK, and R B C when I want to write, I have to again write the numerator. So I have to write the numerator, which is R A R B plus R B R C plus R C R A divided by now I'm talking about R B C, so I should be dividing it by R A. Similarly, when I talk about R C A, it will be R A R B plus R B R C plus R C R A, which should be divided by the other one, which is R B. OK, so these are the expressions for star to delta conversion and delta to star conversion. Now I want to give you an example as to where this is applied. So I'm going to write application of, for example, star to delta conversion. So I'm going to give you an example of star to delta conversion. So let us say I have a network somewhat like this. So I have a four ohm resistance here and I have an 8 ohm resistance here and I'm going to have another 4 ohm resistance here. OK, and I am also having another resistance which is connected somewhat like this. So this is again a 4 ohm resistance what I have connected here. OK, and I'm going to have some 2 ohm resistance here and I have another 4 ohm resistance here. OK, so I'm calling these terminals as A. This is B. This is C and I'm going to rather A, B and I'm going to write this as C. And this is D. OK, and you are being asked to get the equivalent resistance between terminals A and C. What is R equivalent between terminals A and C? OK, so it's not very easy right away to say which resistances are in parallel, which resistances are in series. It's not going to be easy for you to do that. Rather than that, if I try to look at the resistances between A B and C. OK, this these three resistances I'm talking about 4 ohm, 8 ohm and this 4 ohm. If I try to convert that into delta, let us see whether it will be easier for us to do this. So if I convert this into delta, I'm going to get one resistance like this. I'm going to get a second resistance like this and I'm going to get a third resistance like this. You get my point? So between A, D and C, if I try to convert A, B, uh, B is the neutral point. If I am talking about the star, this is the star point where, where all these three resistances, 4 ohm, 8 ohm and 4 ohm are making a star point here. But if I convert this into delta, I'm going to get one resistance connected between A and D, another resistance connected between C and D and the third resistance connected between A and C. 
Now, between A and C, whatever I'm getting, let me call that as RCA or something. So I should be able to write what is RCA using this expression. RARB plus RBRC plus RC RA. So these are the three resistances what I have. So I have four multiplied by four plus four multiplied by eight plus eight multiplied by four. This is going to be the numerator. OK, and divided by if I want this resistance, which is RCA. OK, so RCA will be actually whatever is the resistance other than these two, the third resistance, which is 8 ohm. So this is going to be my RCA, right? So this is going to be 4 times 4, 16, plus 4 times 8, 32, plus 8 times 4, 32, divided by 8 ohms. This is going to be RCA. Similarly, I should be able to get what is RCD, uh, right? So RCD, if I want to get, RCD is this resistance should come at the bottom. So this is actually 16 plus 30, 32 plus 32, 64, 64 plus 16. That is 80, 80 by 8, right? Which is going to be maybe 10 ohm. Please correct me if I make any mistake. So this is going to be 10 ohm, okay? And RCD is going to be again 80 divided by right 448 so i am going to have again this the the other resistance is 14 4 so that is going to be 16 80 80 by 4 is 20 20 ohms okay similarly if i try to draw a resistance here that is going to be rad this is rad so rad is going to be which is again 80 divided by 4 which is 20 ohms okay so i should be able to draw this network somewhat like this now so this is a and i have rad which is 20 ohm which is coming in parallel with the other four ohm connected here so this is one of the terminals. Now from here, so this is D. Now from here, I'm going to have four ohms connected here and RCD, which is also again 20 ohms. So this is going to be another 20 ohms. Okay, and this terminal is connected to this side is C. And similarly, I'm going to have two ohms here, which is already given, and RCA happens to be 10 ohms. So I'm going to have 10 ohms connected here. Again, this terminal is C. Okay, so these two are now connected together. And what is being asked is, what is the R equivalent between A and C? So now, first of all, let me uh, talk about the parallel combination of these two. So this will be 20 multiplied by 4 divided by 24. So 80 by 24. So this is going to be 80 divided by 24 ohms. And here I'm going to have 20 multiplied by 4 divided by 24 again. So this is also going to be 80 divided by 24 ohms. Now these two put together and I am going to have one resistance here, which is 10 multiplied by two divided by 10 plus two. So this is 20 divided by 12. That is going to be the ohms here. And I want to know how much is the R equivalent across this. So these two will come in series, right? This is A, this is D, and this is C. So these two will come in series, which will become 
80 divided by 12 now because 80 by 24 plus 80 by 24 will become 80 by 12. So I should say 80 divided by 12 in parallel with 20 divided by 12 will be the R equivalent across terminals A and C. Is this clear? Yeah. yeah. So the star delta transformation has simplified this quite a bit in getting the R equivalent. So this kind of reduction sometimes is very useful and that is the reason I talked about this, you know, right in the beginning. Any questions on this? Ma'am? Yeah? Ma'am, uh, while you're doing RCA, ma'am, once can you tell me how you, uh, like, how are you taking RB into RC? Like, how did you get 4 and 8 and then 8 and 4? Can, once can See, you tell I me? have one resistance here. I have one more resistance here. And I have the third resistance here. Okay. Right? These are the three which I am trying to convert to delta. This is one. This is the second one. And this is the third one. Oh, okay. These are the three I'm trying to convert to delta. So if I am talking about RCA, these two are the closest. This is the farther away resistance and that should come in the denominator. So the farther away resistance happens to be eight ohms. So that has come in the denominator. Numerator is a constant, right? Star to delta conversion, numerator is a constant. Delta to star conversion, denominator is a constant. Got okay. this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So star delta conversion where to apply it is very difficult to say unless you look at the network. How the network behaves depending upon that you are going to be able to apply this. But one major thing which you have to remember is if I am going to have a star which is connected with three resistances like this. So I'm going to have one resistance here, the other resistance here and the third resistance here. Okay. And I am going to have basically. Let us say this is all equal resistance. This is R, this is R and this is R. And I want to convert that into delta. OK, and in delta, let me call that as R delta. So if I want to convert this into R delta, which is connected in delta, R delta on the top, what I get is, as you see, the numerator is a constant and the numerator is a product of all these things. So I am going to get basically 3 R square. If I am going to have all of them as equal values, this is going to be 3 R square divided by R. So what I get is basically 3 R. So whenever I am converting a star connected R resistance to delta connected R delta, three times that value comes as the per phase or every branch has a resistance of three times R. Rather than that, from delta, let us say I have a delta which is having three resistances connected like this. I'm going to have one R here another R here and the third R here. OK, so three resistances are connected here. Now when I want to convert this into, you know, the equivalent star. Or I want to connect uh, convert this into R Y. OK. So when I want to convert this into star, which I call as R Y. So R Y, I said denominator is a constant and denominator comes up to be the sum of all the resistances. So I'm going to have three R at the bottom. And at the top, what I have is the multiplication of the two branches which are involving. Let us say if I call this as R A and B and C, if I want R A, I have to multiply R C A and R A B. So I'm going to have R square. So I'm going to have essentially R by 3 as the equivalent resistance. So whenever I'm going to have star which is having R, R and R, which is converted into delta, 
every branch is going to have a resistance of 3R. Whereas when I'm going to have a delta with R, R and R in each of the branches, whatever I get as the equivalent resistance per branch, that is going to be R by 3. This becomes extremely important from the point of view of what is the current that is flowing here and what is the current that is flowing here. If I apply the same voltage, then I may have a current of almost three times in the case of delta, whereas I will have a current of one third of delta in the case of star because the equivalent resistances happen to be 3R and R by 3 in the two cases respectively. OK, this is an important result we will be employing later when we are talking about three phase circuits. OK, so I just wanted to make a passing mention of this. Now let us go to network theorems. So we are going to have some discussion about network theorems. OK, so in the network theorem, the first thing that we are going to talk about is something called superposition theorem. So in the superposition theorem, basically the statement is like this. If there are more than one source, in a linear electrical network. Then the current through current or voltage of any particular branch when all the sources are connected is equal to the sum of voltage slash current sum of all the voltage and current what you get with one source connected at a time. That is only one source should be connected at a time. If you try to calculate what is the voltage or current and you add that with all the voltage, I mean uh, every every source should be connected at a time and then you calculate the voltage or current corresponding to that particular source and then you add all of them that will be equal to the actual current or voltage across one particular branch when all the sources are connected together. Let me show you this by taking an example. So I'm going to take a circuit specifically with multiple sources. OK, so let me take a source. Maybe V1 like this. I'm going to take this as 10 volts. Then I'm going to have a 1 ohm resistance connected here. Then I'm going to have a 3 ohm resistance connected here and 3 volts is connected here and I'm going to take one more 3 ohm here and then I'm going to connect a 7.5 volts source here. So I've taken three voltage sources and I'm going to ask you to find out maybe you know current in any particular branch. Uh, let's say let's try to find the current in this particular branch. What is the current in this particular branch? OK. So let's first of all try to do with one voltage at a time. OK, so I'm going to first of all consider only. 10 volt source. Considering only 10 volts source. So if I just consider only 10 volt source, I have to first of all connect the network like this. This is 10 volt source. This is going to be 1 ohm. And here is 3 ohm. 
and here is also 3 ohm and whenever i'm going to nullify the voltage sources i should short circuit them consider i proceed further i would like you to consider one more point as voltage source to current source conversion can be done and current source to voltage source conversion can be done in a network if i am going to have for example something like this i have a voltage source like this okay and i have a you know this is 3 ohm and this is 7.5 volts i should be able to convert this into a current source so this is equivalent to a current source and with the resistance in parallel like this okay so if i say that this is an equivalent current source this will be again 3 ohm but this will be 7.5 divided by 3 ohm that will be the current source so which is 2.5 ampere so this is an equivalent conversion similarly if i am going to have a current source somewhat like this let us say this is a uh, say 2 ampere current source okay and i am going to have a resistance which is corresponding to let us say 6 ohm this can be converted as an equivalent voltage source in series with the resistance okay so this resistance is same as what i have got here whereas 2 multiplied by 6 this will be 12 volts please note this will be plus and this will be minus if the current source is flowing out like this so always the current flows out of the positive terminal so here also this is the positive terminal so the current is flowing in this manner so that is the reason why i am having 2.5 ampere which is pointing upwards is this clear so voltage source to current source conversion can be done and similarly current source to voltage source conversion can be done like this mom what was that what were you saying about the sign convention if i am having plus here the current always flows out of the plus so when i mention the current source it will be upward it will not be downward had it been the reverse if this had been plus and this had been minus by chance right then i would have had the current source downward it should be okay, downward okay so positive by. have to phase it to the positive direction yes because the current always flows out of the positive get my point okay yes yeah yeah so let us try to now look at this network clearly okay so let me try to put this network in the next page once again this is 10 volts with 1 ohm so this is 10 volts with 1 ohm resistance here and i'm having 3 ohm right resistance here and this is 7.5 volts and in between i have 3 ohm with 3 volts source here okay so i can definitely solve this by mesh current analysis or i can do it by superposition either way is fine so let me first of all try to do shall we do it first by mesh current analysis so let me try to do it by mesh current analysis method so in the mesh current analysis method i'm going to have let us say this as i1 and i'm going to take this as i2 what we did in the last class okay so if i have to write this i have to write this as 1 and 3 both of them are carrying 1 ampere of i1 ampere of current so 4 i1 and this is carrying i2 also in the same direction so i should have plus 3 i2 equal to how many voltage sources are, sources are there this is 10 volts 
and this is 3 volts and this is plus and this is minus. So this is voltage rise and if I say this is plus and this is minus, this is voltage fall, right? Voltage is falling. So because of which 10 minus 3, which is 7 volts. This is corresponding to mesh 1. This is going to be the mesh 1 equation. Is this clear? Please repeat. This, this is voltage rise here. This is the voltage is rising from minus to plus, whereas this is plus to minus. So the voltage is falling. We are considering this as the direction of current. So this is voltage fall. So one and three, both of them are carrying I1. So four I1, right? And yes. this is carrying I2 in the same direction as that of I1. So plus three I2 will be equal to the total voltage in this loop. So in this loop, the total voltage is 10 minus 3. So that is 7 volts. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. OK, so ma right. Yeah. Ma'am, here uh, you took the direction of I1 opposite to the direction of I2. Is that a working rule or something? No, I have not taken the direction of I2 to opposite. Here, both of them are additive. Please see. This is I2 direction. This is I1 direction and I1 and I2 are additive. So that is why I have taken plus 3 I2. OK, I'm not taking opposite in the previous class when I took that particular circuit. I had always taken I1 and I2 would oppose each other and I2 and I3 would oppose each other. That is the way I had taken. But here I have taken just the reverse way. So that just to show that it doesn't matter whichever way you take. Ma'am, so I also we can take it in clockwise direction. Absolutely. Here. In in which case you should have taken this sign to be minus three I two. Right now I have taken this to be plus three I two. Get okay. it? Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So now in mesh two, if I have to write the equation, mesh two is having three ohms which is carrying I2. This is also 3 ohm, which is carrying I2. So I have to say 6 I2 for sure. Now again, this resistance 3 ohm is carrying I2 as well as I1 in the same direction. So I have to write 3 I1 plus 6 I2 equal to. Now how much is the current that is actually flowing through? Uh, I mean, how much is the voltage source that is there in this particular mesh? This is minus, this is plus. So this is a voltage rise in the same direction as that of the current. OK, so this is 7.5 volts, whereas this is 3 volts, which, which is plus here and minus here. This is a voltage fall. So 7.5 minus 3, which is going to be 4.5 volts. This is mesh 2. OK, so this these are the two equations that I have got. So what I can do is all these things are divisible by three. So I can write this as I1 plus 2 I2 equal to 1.5 volts. This is equation number two and this is going to be equation number one, which is 4 I1 plus 3 I2 equal to 7 volts. This is going to be equation number one. OK, now I can multiply equation number two by four. OK, number four and I can write four I one. Plus eight I two equal to how much? Four times one point five, which is six volts. So this is going to be equation number two. Now I can say. Uh, one minus 2. 1 minus 2, I can calculate how much is it? I1 will get cancelled. So I1 is going to get cancelled. So I will have 3 I2 minus 8 I2. That is minus 5 I2 equal to how much? 7 minus 6, that is 1 volt. So I'm going to have I2 equal to minus 1 by 5, which is 0.2 ampere. 
What does it indicate? This minus sign indicates that the direction I have assumed is not correct. It is the reverse direction. So the current I2 actually is going to flow in this direction with 0.2 ampere magnitude. That's what it is indicating. OK, so from this I should be able to calculate what is I1. So I said that I1 will be equal to 1.5 minus 2 I2. This is what this equation tells me. So this is 1.5 minus 2 times this 0.2. So that is going to be plus 0.4. So this is 1.9 ampere. Am I correct? OK, so this is going to be 1.9 ampere, which is flowing as I1. So this is actually 1.9. 9 ampere whereas what is flowing through this 3 ohm resistance this 3 ohm resistance is going to be i1 minus uh, plus i2 that's what we said so i1 plus i2 is 1.9 minus 0.2 which is 1.7 ampere so the current through 3 ohm resistance is going to be, the middle 3 ohm resistance is going to be 1.7 ampere. Is this clear? What we have done in mesh current analysis method, we have solved for, so I should say current through this is 1.9 and current through, let me probably draw it clearly. So this is going to be 10 volts. This is going to be, um, how much? What is the kind of resistance? 1 ohm. So this is 1 ohm. And the current that is passing through this is 1.9 ampere in this particular direction. Then I'm going to have one more 3 ohms here. And this is 3 volts. And I'm having one more 3 ohms here. And we said this current is going to be 1.7 ampere. Just now we calculated. Now this is going to be the other one. Right? And this resistance, there is no resistance, sorry. This is directly connected to a voltage source. So this is connected to a voltage source. And this voltage source was 7.5 volts. And we are going to have a current which is flowing here in the other direction because we had taken I2, right? So this is going to be, I think, 0.2 ampere. That's what we got. <clears throat> Am I right? So this is the way it is going to work. Yes, ma'am. Can't be. Can't be. 0.2 should be the other way around, right? Because 1.7 is here and only if 0.2 is in this direction, it will work out OK. This will be 1.9. So this is not 0.2. So this is 0.2 in this particular direction. OK? I think Ma'am, so. because we got minus sign, we are assuming it in the opposite direction. See, the thing is, if this is 1.7 and this is 1.9, Kirchhoff's current law will be valid only if it is 0.2 in this direction. From this junction, I am saying. I'm talking about this particular junction. So yes. from that, I'm saying. Fine. Now let us try to employ the superposition principle. So let me try to put the superposition here. So you should always open circuit the current source and short circuit the voltage source if you want to nullify it open circuit the current source and short circuit the voltage source i hope i didn't tell it the other way around when i said in the previous slide 
I said that you should always open circuit the current source. Open circuit. Current source. And short circuit. Have you told voltage source? No, ma'am, just no. Like few. Open yes, circuit but... the current source to nullify it. And short circuit the voltage source to nullify it. Okay, okay, so if I had told the other way around, please remember it this way. Open circuit OC, the current source, and short circuit, the voltage source. Okay, so I'm going to come back here. Whatever we had done. So first of all, I'm going to consider only 10 volt source. Consider only 10 volts source. So when I consider only 10 volt source, I'm going to have 10 volts here. <clears throat> I'm going to have this one ohm here. I'm going to have a three ohm here. And I'm going to have again three ohm here. And I'm going to short circuit the voltage source. So this is short circuited. This is also short circuited. I'm going to put them together like this. This is the circuit when I'm considering only 10 volt source. Similarly, let me draw for the other two also. OK, I'm going to say consider. Only. Three volts. Source. And the last one is consider. Only 7.5 volts source. So let me draw those circuits as well. So this is short circuited. I'm going to have one ohm here. And only three volt source. So I'm going to have three ohm. And this is three volts. Now what I have here is again three ohm. So I'm going to have <coughs> this short circuited. And this is the way it is going to be. Now the third one when I consider I'm going to have one ohm here. This is short circuited. This is three ohm. This is also short circuited and I'm going to have three ohm and 7.5 ohms. OK. So we have open circuited. No current source because there is no current source but we have short circuited two voltage sources which are not being considered at any point in time. Now let us try to calculate what is the kind of current I have here. So three and three put together parallel combination. I'm going to have 1.5 uh, ohms here together. The parallel combination of these two. So that 1.5 ohm will come in series with this one. So I will have 10 divided by 2.5, which will be 4 amperes of current. This 4 ampere will divide itself into 2 ampere here and 2 ampere here. So this 3 ohm resistance is carrying a current of 2 ampere under this particular condition. Is that clear? Ma'am, here there are 3 ohm, 3 ohm, so you are dividing it equally. If they are not, if one is 3 ohm, the other one is 7 ohm, then you are not supposed to divide it equally, right? Yes, absolutely. You have to calculate the current exactly according to the resistance current division rule, right? We always yes. say the other resistance divided by the summation of these two resistances. So here it is 3 ohm divided by 3 plus 3 multiplied by 4 ampere. So that is 2 ampere each. Right? That's what it is. How did you find out the 4 ampere of flow, ma'am? This is 1.5 is the equivalent resistance when you consider 3 and 3 in parallel. This is 3 multiplied by 3 divided by 3 plus 3. Right? That is half of this original value. So 9 divided by 6, which is 1.5 ohm. Right? Whereas this is going to be 1.5 plus 1, which is 2.5. So this is going to be 10 volt divided by 2.5 ohm, 
which is equal to 4 ampere. Got it? Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Here you are going to have 3 and 1 in parallel because these two are in parallel. You understand that 3 is here and 1 is here. Both of them are in parallel. So this is going to be 3 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 plus 1, which is 0.75 ohm. And I'm going to have 3.75 ohm coming against the 3 volts source. So 3 volts divided by 3.75 ohm is going to be the current which is flowing in this direction. This is the direction in which the current is going to flow in the 3 ohm resistance. So this is if I call this as some I X. So this is going to be I X. OK, whereas the 2 ampere current is flowing downward. Please remember that. So I X and this 2 ampere are in two opposite directions. The last one that I need to do is 7.5 ohm. 7.5 yeah where is that ix you're talking about this is the ix i have shown here ix okay. the direction i have shown here okay now we are going to again calculate what is the current here so three and one are in parallel so again the equivalent resistance of this are is going to be 0.75 ohm so this is going to be 7.5 divided by 3.75 ohm. That is going to be 2 ampere. And 2 <coughs> ampere is flowing in this direction. This is 2 ampere. Now this 2 ampere divide itself, it divides itself into two portions. So 2 ampere will be flowing through this whatever is the uh, amount that is going to flow through this will be 2 multi uh, multiplied by 1 divided by 3 plus 1, 4. <coughs> so this is going to be 0.5 ampere, which is going to flow here. If I may call this as IY, IY is going to be 0.5 ampere. Okay, so I am going to have basically the current through current through the 3 ohm resistance in series with 3 volts source. That will be equal to 2 ampere minus Ix, right, plus Iy because I'm looking at the directions basically. So that is going to be 2 minus, how much is 3 by 3.75? How much is 3 by 3.75? 3 divided by 3.75 is going to be 0.8. So I should say 2, yeah, just a second, 2 minus 0.8 and plus 0.5. Right? So 2.5 minus 0.8, which is 1.7 ampere. <coughs> okay? So 7, 1.7 ampere is the answer we got by the other one also in the previous slide. We got 1.7 ampere as the current that came up here. Right? Where did I calculate that? Fry by mesh current method. That also came out to be 1.7 ampere. This came out to be 1.7 ampere. And here also it is coming out to be one point mesh current method. Where is that? Uh, 1.9 minus 0.2. This is also 1.7 ampere. Yes, Peta, one of you had a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how did you get the current in the second circuit, the three volt circuit? I didn't get it. 1 ohm, see if I just redraw this a little differently, this is the 3 volt source and this is the 3 ohm resistance. In parallel with that, I have 3 ohm and this is also 1 ohm. So this is 3 ohm and 1 ohm. 
these two are in parallel with each other so these two are in parallel with each other which is in series with this particular resistance which is 3 ohm so that's what we have done these two are in parallel which is 3 multiplied by 1 divided by 3 plus 1 which is 0.75 ohm so that 0.75 ohm is in series with 3 ohm you get my point these two are yes, in parallel with each other i didn't know you could like uh, but it's uh, the battery was in the middle right the voltage yeah it doesn't matter right because yes. all of these things are in parallel 1 ohm there is nothing else here and this is 3 ohm there is nothing else here so very clearly it is as good as connecting it like this this is 3 volt this is 3 ohm and if i may call this terminal as a and this terminal as b from a to b i have 1 ohm resistance and from a to b i have 3 ohm resistance so isn't it same as what i have drawn here yeah yes ma'am no yeah problem. so it is series and parallel you have to slowly identify which is in series which is in parallel there is nothing here if there had been any component at this point then i could have, could not have drawn it like that okay so superposition theorem when you apply only thing you need to remember is you should take one source at a time always one source at a time and if it is current source if you if you want to nullify it make sure that you are open circuiting it for nullifying and similarly if you are taking a voltage source and you want to nullify that voltage source you make sure that you short circuit it ma'am so yeah ma'am and another doubt how did you get like minus and plus the currents how did you know which direction yeah if you are talking about here the voltage source is positive here from the voltage source the current always emanates out from the positive okay from the positive of the voltage source always the current will go and it will try to nullify the negative side basically because see the electrons flow out of the negative terminal <coughs> but the current is always the opposite of the flow of direction of flow of electron isn't it right yes um, yeah yeah so always the current will flow out of the positive terminal so here also if you see the current has to flow out of the positive terminal and here also if you look at the 10 volt source the current has to flow out of the positive terminal always it will flow out of the positive terminal got it yeah so mom how, one how is the current equation how you got how what minus ix how did you get minus ix and uh, plus iy ix is flowing out of this plus plus terminal so the current ix has to flow out of the positive terminal which is in this direction when i am looking at this very clearly the current was flowing from up to down whereas here it is flowing from down to up because this is plus this is plus whereas here if i am trying to look at this is plus so the current is flowing in this direction so the current would obviously flow in up to down so up to down i have taken as here the reference direction so up to down it is 2 ampere here down to up it is ix and here up to down it is iy so iy and 2 amperes have to be added both of them are in the same direction whereas ix is in the opposite direction so it has to be subtracted okay so to uh, when we look at this in tomorrow's class again maybe i'll just recall this i'll take this up and i'll show you the